guys. So I'm going to wait a sec to let everybody join, but I've got all my ingredients placed out in front of me. So if you're planning to bake with us, you can definitely start to prep your ingredients if you haven't already. It just makes life so much easier if everything is already laid out. I'm going to slightly readjust this. Let's see. Go like that. That'll be great. So Melissa's going to join us in a second and then we'll get to baking. Let's see. All right. So many fun comments. Thank you guys, everybody who's joining. I think it's going to be a really fun class. These cookies are pretty easy to make and they're super delicious. So, I mean, you can't really go wrong with sprinkles and Oreos, right? Also, I know this angle is super high. I have like two stools stacked on top of each other in front of me, so it's a little extreme, but I really want you guys to be able to see everything that I'm doing in my bowl. And a lot of times, um, I feel like it's too low, so you can't see. I'm gonna also, I'm just like rambling at this point. I'm gonna make sure that I <laughs> accept Melissa into here. I think she's trying to join right now. Melissa, I think in the bottom of your screen, you can request Let's see, you might have already done it. There we go. Okay, and now let's just make sure the screen splits correctly. There we go. There we go. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna tilt this down. Okay. Oh, you my have angles, a really good angle. I'm my angle's like too. really aggressive. My head's a little bit cut off, but I want everyone to see it's in my bowl. Oh, Melissa, I love your shirt. <laughs> I made it. It's tie-dyed by Melissa. You are literally like a tie-dye expert. I feel like I always see people that have this like perfect pattern and I know if I tried to do it, it would just be like splotches. Somebody asked me today, like, do you have a tie-dye shirt for every day of the week? And I was like, actually, yes. I'm not surprised by that. <laughs> um, but I'm so excited to be baking with you. I know, it's so good to see you. I know, it's, it's hard, you guys, because I think that a lot of us normally have coffee dates, like, you know, every so often to catch up with our friends. I'm going to try I, and make my angle as good as you are. It's, most, it's really hot. My thing is, like, if you could <laughs> see the trajectory where my thing is. Oh, that's pretty good. All right, that's as, that's as good as I'm going to get it, but you could at least see in my ball. I think that looks great. Great. Um, but I feel like normally by now we would have grabbed coffee, but it's like with COVID and everything, you're just not seeing your friends the same way you used to, but getting to bake together on an Instagram live is almost as fun. So I'll take it. I I'll take what I can I needed a fun activity to break up my day of Zoom calls and I've been looking forward to this all day. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited. Okay. Well then without further ado, let's get to making these cookies. So we're going to start off by adding our butter and our sugar into our bowl. So one stick? So it's actually three quarters of a stick. And I updated Ooh. the recipe card, but yesterday it like wasn't pulling in through Google until like yesterday evening. But that's the only change, I promise. So All right, well that's okay. So uh, some of the ingredients I have measured, I oh. do not have your recipe in front of me, but I read what I needed. Everything else is the same, Melissa, so you're good to go. Um, but that I is one thing like I was gonna note. I'll be able to do it. Yeah, and if it's right. a little bit cold, it should warm up as we kind of cream them together. But right. no, because I was thinking about that. If somebody like printed off the recipe like right when we shared, I was like, people are going to, and they'll still turn out, but the dough is just like super thick with half a stick. And I found I liked it better with three quarters of a stick, which is really just like one, not three quarters, sorry. One and a half stick. I cannot talk. Wait, how much, how much butter do I need right now? One and a half sticks or three quarters of a cup. Oh, so I only had half a cup. Okay, so I need the rest of that. Yes. So and then you need another one. Good well, thing. Stop your cookies. <laughs> Good thing I always have a lot of butter on hand. That's one thing I would not be worried about with you. <laughs> I've actually been baking a lot lately. All right, I'm gonna microwave it. Do small intervals or low power though. What? Make sure you do it only for a little bit so it doesn't turn into a pool. Oh, I know. I, I, like, you have to microwave it for, like, eight seconds. Okay, that's good. I'm one of those people that always tries to microwave butter when I'm impatient and it's not thawed and I melt it into, like, a complete liquid. 
So I'm always nervous about the microwave, but I know that there's plenty of people who use it all the time responsibly and it works great for thought. You know what? I do nine seconds and it's still pretty cold. So I'll just like quit. If you cut it up into chunks, it should, yeah, it should be good. Great. Okay. Into the pool. <laughs> okay. Did I mix? I mix yep. it. Yep. So we're going to cream it together until, and you can use a hand mixer or a sand mixer, you guys. We're going to mix it together just until it's nice and fluffy, which usually takes about a minute or two. So you want to turn it on to like a high speed and really let it go. This is like the loud part. I feel like I'm screaming. I'm going to, I'm going to be very loud for a second. You know what's really, you know what's really good about this recipe, which I've never, like, I didn't cheat. I've never made it. I did stare at the picture though of your cookies for so long that I decided to use a knife to chop the Oreos ah. because I felt like it would be less crummy and keep the the cake white. Yes. Um, but I feel like this is the right size batch of cookies. Like everything I've baked lately is just like like a so much batter and like we have so much cake and I wind up eating it all but like I could tell by the amount of butter and sugar that it's like a normal size batch so yes I've definitely been trying to make smaller size batches too because I'm not seeing friends and like family it's just like who do you, who's gonna eat all of it I can only eat so much in a day you know and I'm and I'm sure you feel the same way I deliver everything to my neighbors they're like <laughs> which I don't even know if it's legit like maybe some of them throw it all away I'm also going to turn on my oven really quickly, you guys. And the thing about this recipe to 350 Fahrenheit, the thing about this recipe is it requires an hour of chilling time in the fridge. But I'm oh. going to pop mine into the freezer, and we're also just going to bake one straight out of the bowl to show you guys how much it's going to spread. It's still going to taste great. It will just spread a little bit more. Um, but in general, you wait to turn your oven on until your cookies are chilled, but we're kind of getting creative because... I'm just here slime. mixing over you so nobody can hear oh, what you no, say. Yeah, no, it's totally fine. Well, so. I'm sorry. I'm done. I'm done with that part. I was going to say, I definitely undermixed my butter and sugar less, or mixed it less than I normally would just because we're doing live, but you want to mix Same. it until it gets kind of lighter in color normally. So you're doing it the right way, Melissa. The more <laughs> you mix it, the better, like the lighter and yes. the fluffier. So what did you just put in? The egg? Exactly. So I'm about to add in one egg that's at room temp, and we're also going to add in one teaspoon of vanilla extract. And then you go I'm heavy? Huh? You go heavy on the vanilla? I'm usually pretty heavy handed. I also eyeball it a lot of the time. So I probably okay. added like one and a half, but that's what anyway. I'm going to do. The vanilla really is to taste. So, um, but also vanilla is so expensive these days. I try not to be like too crazy with how much I add. So true. All right. Okay. Should we mix? Ready? Yeah, one, I'm going to be loud. I need to, I need to scrape down. I'm going to scrape yeah. down. So do I. And you guys, especially whenever you're, pretty much whenever you're making anything, if you see things along the sides of the bowl that like aren't getting mixed in together, it's always worth pausing and scraping so that everything comes together in your batter. There should be like a mute button. Like, hey Siri, mute my phone while I put my mixer on. You know, I ordered a handheld mixer on Williams Sonoma when quarantine started and it said it was going to be delivered in June and it's still not here. That's crazy. I ordered mine in like February, so I got lucky, but um, it's, it is easier I find for demos to do a hand mixer, but the stand mixer is so much more efficient. Right, because um, then you could tilt the bowl and be like, so look, here it is. Yeah. You have more control. Exactly. But also like the KitchenAid is so fun and quick and easy. It's also like, you know, keeps her own. My, my KitchenAid was a gift for my wedding from the Baked by Melissa team. Oh, that's so sweet. It's such a Isn't pretty it? color, too. Right? It's and it's like, it's eight years old. More, nine years they old. La they last her forever, I swear. Okay, yeah. so now we're going to add in our other dry ingredients except for our flour. So that's going to be our baking soda, our baking powder, our salt, and a little bit of cream of, cream of tartar okay, or so cornstarch. So now I need you to tell me me measurements. Okay, so were you doing, 
<laughs> I'm 99% sure I'm right about this from memory. We're doing one teaspoon of baking powder. Right. You know, okay. I'm going to use up my baking powder right now. One teaspoon. Go for it. I feel it. honored that I'm giving the last of it. Yep. Then a half a teaspoon of baking soda. You know, and I don't know if this is cream of tartar, but, like, I think it is because I don't know why we thought it would be a good idea to, like, repackage some of our spices at one point. I'm sure that it is. And honestly, the cream of tartar or the cornstarch just makes the cookies a little bit chewier. They'll yeah, still I was going to ask. I'm, like, cause it, okay, how much cream of tartar? Um, one teaspoon. Great. It's definitely a weird ingredient. And also, cream of tartar is actually kind of expensive. Um, but it just makes the cookie, it's like a, a great cheat to make chewy cookies, which is why I like to Every kid's Play-Doh recipe I have found calls for cream of tartar. Just a fun <laughs> fact. I did and not know, I have yet, yet to learn that, but that's good to know. <laughs> and flour? Um, no flour yet. We're waiting on okay. flour. So, so we're going to mix a, pin, a pinch of salt if you're on. Uh, that I put in. I okay, always great. go heavy on the salt. It, like, brings out the flavor. It does. It balances. You get, like, the salty sweet, and it balances out all the sweet. I love it. Okay, okay now so we'll mix this out. quickly on a high speed, or medium speed, I guess. Great. That's all incorporated. And then now we're going to add in our flour. And I kind of added it in two parts. I'll add half while I'm mixing on low. And the reason you add it after you mix in the other stuff is just because you want all of that to get incorporated before you add the flour because you don't want to overmix your cookie dough. So we're That's gonna actually a really good point. I don't usually do that, but I think I'm going to take your uh, half. It just, it just like, I think mean, makes the cookies taste a little bit better when they come out. It makes the texture better. So we're going to mix this, you guys, just until your flour is fully incorporated. It's going to get pretty thick. So get ready. And also oh, my gosh. Them. What? Smells good? I just love the smell of cookie dough. I, like, I want to eat it right now. Ooh. I'm well, not going to share this one with my neighbors. So if you see me do things like this, it's Licking okay. the bowl. <laughs> yeah. I'm definitely going to sample some cookie dough in a minute. And I'm going to, I'm very Yum. much looking forward to eating some out of the oven. It tastes um, like sugar cookie dough a little bit. It, it, it really is, to be honest. Um, it's pretty much sugar cookies just with, like, a lot of sprinkles and Oreos. So I love I, a good cookie dough base before you, like, put the stuff inside. It's You kind of forget that sugar cookies are so good on their own. You just think about, like, chocolate chip or oatmeal. But No, I know really sugar cookies are so good on their own. I have a cupcake flavor that is just sugar cookie dough stuffing, sugar cookie dough icing, and sugar cookie dough topping. You guys do, like, every possible flavor, I swear. Just like a bomb of sugar cookie dough. <laughs> All right, mine's good. I'm not going to overmix it. I think mine's great. So do we – am I done? Can I take the paddle attachment off? Um, yeah, so you can mix it in in your uh, stand mixer if you want to, but I really like to do this part with a rubber spatula just because, like, yeah. I don't want to break up the Oreos too much like we chatted about earlier. But now – like, 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 your cookies look so perfect. I, I like, I feel like – you know, as, like, Melissa, I, I need to be, like, just as perfect. <laughs> Coming from, like, the cupcake, macaroon, and everything ever baked good queen herself, I will take that as a huge compliment. <laughs> I, I really, like, I, I studied it. I have, I have some things. And I know <laughs> that we, do we save some Oreos to top it with? Yes, you can. Um, I like to do that, and I like to add a few sprinkles to the top just because, it's not all about the looks, you guys, but you really do eat with your eyes first, I always say. So, like, you want it to look just as good as it tastes. So, In my I'm experience, gonna... like, it is about the looks. With, with, like, baked goods, like, you you taste it with your eyes first, and ultimately you're going to pick, like, the one that looks the best. I totally agree. Mm. Um, I know. I just ate some of the cookie dough. It's actually quite good on its own. But you guys it's know really good. We're adding in a half a cup of Oreos, um, a half a cup of sprinkles, and I'm actually going to add in some chocolate chips, too. So I was going to do that, and I didn't want to be rude. Okay. <laughs> no, it's optional, and I, ma I made these uh, last week, and I gave one to my husband, and he was like, you know, these are really good, but I feel like it's just missing a little bit of chocolate. Like, it needs a little bit of chocolate. So um, it's so optional, while I was but I think my eyes, and I was looking at the picture as, like, chocolate chip. I mean, how, many, how many chocolate chips are you adding? You can add up to a half a cup. It's kind of at your discretion. It'll make 
the cookie dough a little bit harder to mix and form, but I think it's worth it. There's also nothing better than like a little piece of chocolate melted on a cookie when it comes out of the oven and it's like a pool of warm goodness. So I'm all I about know. the oh. But here's the problem. I am going to single-handedly finish all of these cookies tonight. You know what? That's okay. You do yoga. I see your stories. You're nice I did yoga this morning, but like yeah. it's not enough. Okay. <laughs> And then another thing, uh, like, you know, you can have fun with this recipe. So I'm, I usually don't say that rainbow sprinkles and non real rainbow sprinkles are interchangeable, but today I'm going to try out some of the baby non reals which are just like the little dot sprinkles like this. I'm probably saying that wrong. I never know. non -pareils. I call them non -pareils. Pareils. They bleed um, a little bit. So if I were you, like, they bleed more than sprinkles. The very last thing you do is add the non -pareils. Maybe just you the, can only put the top. Maybe like roll the cookie maybe jars. Dump. That's actually a good idea. Okay, I'm down for that. So I'm gonna mix my batter. As soon as I was about to pour it, I was like, this is probably a bad idea. And then I was like, yes. <laughs> Okay, I don't know how many Oreo pieces that was. And you said half a cup of sprinkles? Yep. I didn't have my, I couldn't find my rainbow sprinkles, but I have hot pink sprinkles. So they're going yeah. in. That'll be great. Okay, I just remembered also, I gotta grab my cookies. Hold on. Whoa, these look awesome. Um, ooh. My cookie scoop's a little bit jammed. Let me see. All right. Oh my gosh, I'm there so excited. Go. Nothing like a new recipe I've never baked before. And no we've pressure, never though, baked right? together. But we did, we did make a cake together. You, you came to Bloomingdale's for the launch of my cookbook. We did. That was so fun. Doesn't that seem so so long ago? It was, it was like another lifetime. That was when we could go to stores and be close I made, to each other. I made your um your mini smash cakes too. The banana cakes from your book. They were so good. Oh, that's amazing. I have right, to make I'm, one of those. Too. I'm gonna I'm add really. in half of my. So you guys, if you're not using non frills and you're using regular sprinkles and being normal, add them in and mix them in together. I'm gonna add just a few because I want some in the cookies. And then I'll also dip them, which I'm actually really excited about. That's a great idea, Melissa. So whoever is baking with us, like, I don't measure when it comes to certain things because you know how much you like when it comes to chocolate chips and Oreos. And, like, I hear a lot from people that, oh, like, I'm not good at baking, blah, 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 blah. But, like, if you know what you love and if you love dessert as much as me and I'm sure Chelsea too – then you should just trust your gut with so much of this. And just like anything else, like the first time you try anything, it's not going to probably be your very best outcome. But the more you do something, the better you get at it. Like the first time I tried to make a cake, it was terrible. Like, and, you know, I practiced a lot and got better. And I'm sure, Melissa, with your first ever batch of cupcakes, I'm sure they do not taste as amazing as they do now. I don't even remember my first ever batch of cupcakes because I've been, like, Doing it, like, I just, I've always loved to bake, but I, I, I will say I have very high hopes for the way these cookies come out. I'm, I'm hoping that my first time with these is, like, you know, perfect. I think you are definitely a baking pro now, Melissa, so I'm, I'm pretty sure it'll turn out great. I hope, I really, you know, I hope All right. so. Okay, I got so, my, I got my sheet. Great. I'm going to use. I don't have one of those. So that's totally fine. You can roll them in your hands. The dough, the stickiness of the dough is going to depend on how warm your butter was when you mixed it. So like when I made it before, my butter was properly at room temp, so it was a little bit firmer. But now it's a little bit um, softer. So if you find it's a little bit too soft or sticky for your hands, you can always... What size ball? ball? Golf ball? I like to say that? about a golf ball, a little bit smaller than a golf ball, like three quarters like of a Like a ping ball. pong ball. Yes. You are <laughs> exactly. I was like, I have no idea what this size is, but like this. All right, here's my first ping pong ball. So um, we're we're gonna you shake these. That you really have to refrigerate them. So honestly, I haven't tested them. I've tested them with different amounts of chilling, but I have never tested them straight from here into the oven. And that's what I'm gonna do today. So I'm actually gonna put three on here now and I'm going to pop them into the oven, which I've had preheating, but the rest I'm going to chill. I like to chill. I know they turn out great when you chill them for an hour, but it's so hard to wait. So today we're going to find out. So pop them probably in the oven now. They're a little flatter. They're definitely going to spread like a lot more, but 
You know what? I'm going to test them too because I want to eat one with you. That's what I was going to say. I, I should have made an extra batch ahead of time to like have them chilled because you can't make something on a live stream and not like taste test it or eat it, right? I completely agree. And I'm, I'm going to totally go up with your timing. I'm cheating a little bit. We need to like, can you see what I'm doing? I don't know. I'm cutting no, the Oreos so I can have like a like pretty, pretty tops like you. Oh, that's not cheating. That's just like being strategic. I know. I agree. I, I highly recommend doing that. You know what I just realized? I forgot to roll the ones I popped in the oven into sprinkles, but I will. I did. I will do I'm that. doing that right now. Can you see? Yeah. yeah. Those are awesome. I'm going to put my sprinkles over here. They're like pink, happy little babies. Little baby cookies. Okay. I swear, cooking makes me just like turn into like a... I don't even know what. I'm like, I'm giddy. I just love cook. Like, oh, there's nothing better. Okay. In you guys go. We'll see what happens. Fingers crossed they turn out a lot. I'm sure they will. I need to wash. All right. It definitely now, makes your fingers a little dirty. Another baking pan. Right? Yep. Okay. And you guys, you can make all different size cookies. If you only have a big scoop, you can make like jum jumbo funfetti Oreos. Or if you want to make little minis that bake out to be an inch, you can do a tiny little ball. You just have to kind of adjust the bake time for the size of your cookies, but they're going to turn out great no matter what size you make them. So uh, if you are really into jumbo cookies, go for it. So like Chelsea, if I have to make a cake for someone, could I just like put this in the base of a pie pan and bake it off like a cookie cake? I mean, I have not tried it, but I'm sure you could. You just have to use the right type of pan so it wouldn't like overcook. Um, or you could line the pan. I like to, I use parchment lately for everything. Yeah. Like oven safe parchment. And then you don't even really need to grease anything or clean anything. I see you have a Silpat mat, which is like probably the best. I like using parchment, um, but sometimes silicone's just like easier. I'm lazy and I don't wanna like go cut my parchment to fit my pan. Or like so run back and forth like I It's really more it. being lazy than anything else. <laughs> well, it's good. Uh, oh my goodness. I'm, I'm really surprised I, at how white the cookies are. For how much Oreos we mixed in? Yeah. Yeah. I don't even know how many Oreos I mixed in. But you I'm going to be popular tonight. <laughs> you can also be like a little heavy handed with the Oreos, the chocolate chips, the sprinkles, you guys. So you just have to make sure that your cookie dough will still come together. But you could probably add in like up to two thirds of a cup of each of those and these along with chocolate chips and they would still turn out fine. So you can see my cookie dough is pretty sticky. So the only thing you can run it or the only time you know you have a problem is if your cookie dough is kind of like crumbly or won't stay put together because there's too many add-ins. But I don't think we're anywhere close to that. And we both were pretty generous with our add-ins. Yeah, I don't even know how much I added in, but mine can you, I'm gonna put like a lot of them on top, I think. Yeah, and that's the other thing too, you can always add more that way as well. The, the non kernels in the cookie dough actually didn't smear too much, but now that I'm at the end, they're starting to bleed. But then it's pretty, it probably looks a little tie-dye, right? It does, because it only did it a little bit. <laughs> but yeah, it looks Because you're conscious of it, it's good. But it's good to learn, you know, good to learn. You can only learn by doing, so. I agree. So now I've, I'm learning how to make soft batch. What are they called? Tech, like, I, I screwed it up when I did the, you know, the teaser in our story. You didn't screw it up. I call them soft batch funfetti Oreo cookies, but you can call them like Oreo sprinkle cookies. You can call them just about anything, you know, <laughs> anything that gets the point across that there's Oreos and sprinkles in them, I think does them justice. My four-year-old's two favorite foods, I, she, she, I had to make her go to the roof to play, <laughs> while I, otherwise she'd just be here eating Oreos, so. <laughs> I um, actually am using uh, birthday cake Oreos for these cookies, which are like Ooh. by far and away, I think, the best Oreo flavor. Um, Wait, are they chocolate cookie with funfetti middles? Yeah, so they, let's see. Yes. So they're like, the cream tastes different and it has sprinkles in it. Ah. Which 
which like is so unnecessary and like you can write, totally use regular Oreos, but I just, they, it's I just the love little the clutches it. though, you know? Yeah. It just like amps them up a little bit more. And also I just like prefer eating that type of Oreo. It's my, my favorite. favorite Oreo is the dark chocolate Oreo. Those are good. Those are, but you kind of need a glass of milk because they're really rich. Like oh. the, so much flavor. I like dark chocolate is my favorite and I hate there's like so many places who label things as dark chocolate but it doesn't taste rich enough, you know? Yeah. So I do. they they did a good job. I was kind of impressed. It's very intensely chocolatey, I'll give you that. I ran out of room. I'm gonna figure out a way to add another row though. Yeah, the hardest part, you know, chilling cookies is such like a it's it's hard, but it's worth it because it like makes still a gratification, right? It makes them taste all the sweeter once you're actually able to bake them. The chilling, yeah. Because why why do we chill them? Will they stay thick? Like they'll spread out less? Exactly, yeah. So you also could make these in advance and like chill them overnight. You also could roll out the cookies and freeze the cookie dough and then bake them straight from the freezer. Ah. Um, in the future, so if you don't want to bake all these today, Melissa, or like you know that you don't need like 500 cookies in your apartment, which I also, or in your house, which I also don't need. Um, you can always like freeze some and bake them like next weekend or they, they last I think for, I would say up to a month in the freezer. I haven't yeah. tested the upward limits of that, but most things last a pretty long time. That's a good freezer, idea. So, but yeah. I don't know. I, I, I'm gonna go big. Gotta bake them all. <laughs> I know it's kind of some also when you already have your oven on like you're already heating up your kitchen and sometimes it's like maybe I should just you know bite the bullet and bake them all but I I mean yeah mine are not really consistent in size so some will be less cooked than others which when it comes to cookies I'm totally fine with um yeah and also some people like some you know you think that everybody likes cookies the way that you do but you Take a poll on Instagram sometime, and you'll see some people like them crispy, some people like them chewy. Everybody has different preferences. Sometimes it's good to have a variety. What kind of cookies do you like, Chelsea? Yeah, actually, almost. I'm going to give them another few minutes. Um, so I pretty clearly am a fan of chewy cookies, which is like almost all of my cookie recipes. But there are some cookies that are crispy that I like, um, like oatmeal lace cookies. They're ah. a little bit cris crunchy. But they're also I actually thought you cheap. made those. I paid attention to that video because I never knew. I remember those cookies. The, those are like, they come in like with the Italian cookies, right? Like the butter cookies. Yep. I yep. never knew that there was oatmeal in that cookie before. I like, I, but they're so good. Some of them, some, some versions are also made with almonds. So it, oh. can, it can vary. Um, but yeah, I love the crunch it's just like such a it tastes like caramel it tastes like you're eating cookies that yeah, are crunchy caramel, which i love so wait melissa so do you like crunchy or chewy cookies chewy chewy and like i was actually thinking about just like stuffing more oreos like in the middle of these like i like chewy gooey cookies and you totally could that speaking of like making bigger cookies you can totally sandwich an oreo in the middle you're gonna end up with like pretty Thick, like they're gonna look like hockey pucks but you can totally do that as well you guys so if you're still shaving your cookies and you have extra Oreos feel free to throw them in there Melissa right. I'm gonna take a I'm gonna take a look at to see if we have any questions that we should answer you guys are gonna see my face really up close sorry <laughs> you know my mom is watching oh that's so she sweet. asked she texted me asking how she can watch our Instagram live I bad? love that so I, so I gave her like very clear directions. You have to go to Chell Sweets or Bake by Melissa and click on the profile link, you know, whatever. That's Sorry. hilarious. You have such a sweet mom. I know. Well, hi, Melissa's mom. I don't think I've ever met you, but happy to have you here and happy to have everyone here. You guys, thank you so much to, to everybody who has tuned in and is baking with us. I'm trying to see yeah, if there's any are coming. Oh no. Oh no. How long do you bake the cookies for? So seven put, minutes, right? Uh oh, I tilted this down too far. So I tried mine for seven, and then they seem like they need needed a little bit more, so I added two more minutes on. But this is going to vary a bit with your um, size of your cookie. Let's see if I have a little thing. And like in my in my opinion, I think cookies are done when you are starting to see like a little golden color. 
then you could guarantee that they're cooked and you could eat them safely. But like, again, what Chelsea was saying is everyone likes cookies differently. And so like, it really pisses me off when people think baking is like a, an exact science. If it looks done, take them out and they'll be delicious. I promise. And if not, I, just put them back in. Try one, I, burn your mouth a little. Could not agree. Also, I just realized that my camera is really saying this. Melissa, I could not well, agree like more. Let's see, there we go. Um, I always look for just like a little bit of golden brown on the edge and I always kind of want them to actually be slightly underbaked because they keep cooking on the, you know, when they come out of the oven, they're smoking hot and they're still gonna, um, they're gonna firm up as they cool too. I so. should look at mine. Uh, mine, mine still have a way to go. And you know what I realize? I'm like trying to space these out, but it really doesn't matter because they're gonna go in the fridge and then I could rearrange them. So. I was gonna say you're being very like um, precise with your cookie prep, but it looks beautiful and I respect it. Mine they're are just very like close. If they're too, they're too, uh, you know, they're not socially distancing. That's for sure. <laughs> they look really good though. <laughs> And, and and I just like want to get done with this part so I could decorate them, you know. I and know. I one of the it's so crazy how long it took me to like learn this little cookie hack. But for those of you who love chocolate chip cookies and you never know how like people like us make them look so perfect on Instagram, when you're done rolling the balls, and it is important to use a scoop or roll a ball because that's how you get a symmetrical circle because then it melts yes. down into a circle. You you. Top it with chocolate chips. Yes. That's the secret. And then that way, when it, when it like cooks down and it melts down in the oven, it looks like a perfect cookie that's like professionally made. And I like to also sprinkle a little tiny bit of salt on yes. top of like all my, if, if it is chocolate chips, it has salt sprinkled on top too. Oh my gosh, Melissa, we are the same person. I. I, I mean, always, we always, both love to bake the same amount, so it makes sense. I feel like I add salt to almost every cookie I make, and my husband doesn't love that added flavor, but I do. And I always really? just feel like I put salt, and it's like, you know, flaky seal. I feel like I put it on almost everything. And I'm like, I've got, to, I've got to calm it down, but it really is so good. And it adds such a, it adds a bit of texture and another, like, I don't know, it adds more depth of flavor. It I makes, so like... Better. Salt can like make something that doesn't taste good, like not necessarily with cookies because all cookies taste good, but like in the food department, like salt just makes things, like it changes the whole flavor. It does, it does. It, it makes it like taste. Like if you, don't, if you don't have the salt, then you can't really taste the other flavors. A flavor I, enhancer, it's a flavor enhancer. That's what it is. I 100% agree. Um, Speaking of great cookie hacks, all of those are fantastic, Melissa, and I 100% support them, and I think I just did them as you were saying it, which is great. Another fun thing, so if you're using a cookie scoop, your cookies are actually going to bake pretty symmetrically because they should be like pretty similarly shaped and round, but if you have any cookies that go a little rogue or that were maybe in a hot spot of your oven that overspread, when the cookies are still hot out of the oven, you can take a circle cutter that's slightly bigger than your cookie and you can just kind of wiggle it around like this, and it'll shape it into a more perfect circle. Oh, wow, that's a good idea. Well, now some of, sometimes I think this looks like a little bit creepy because all your cookies are so perfectly circular. It looks Look cool. at my cookies! Those are, so, the sprinkles are so fun on there. One looks perfect, the other two are a little sad, but <laughs> they're still gonna taste really good. They're gonna taste great. And I knew they were done because they're like, they're not brown, but they're like, you know, those people who take way too long to roast marshmallows and they like hold it well, like until they get like the yellowy kind of golden flavor. Yes. That's what I go for in my cookie edges. That's such a good analogy. I've never thought about it that way. I am always- I think about food way too much. I always like burn my marshmallows, so that's probably why I've never thought of that. Cause like my marshmallows are just like on fire, but I, I like that a lot. <laughs> It, it really. I, I don't like the. I don't like burnt mallows. I mean, I don't think anybody does. Well, actually, some people love it. That's, some people do love it, and some I people don't like know. burnt like popcorn. You know. Ew, I hate the smell of burnt popcorn. I'm gonna put like three to four chocolate chips on top of each one, and like two pieces of Oreo. 
I think that sounds awesome. I added oh some gosh. some of the mini chocolate chips to mine, some more non creole sprinkles. And oh, you're using mini Florida. chocolate chips. Do you have a brand of chocolate chips that you love the most? Um, I really like Jude Deli, and I also like, um, I think I always say this one, Guitard. Uh, they sell them at Whole Foods. Yes, yeah, I think they're really good. And I, I it's kind of like Guitard I can only find at um, Whole Foods, which I haven't been going to because honestly yep. the lines have been so long. <laughs> So really? Life, yeah, it's been out the door every day. Um, so I've been using a lot of Giordelli just because that's what my uh, neighborhood grocery store carries. But um, I think those two are. Is that, is that your favorite too? I literally have already had like three small handfuls of dark chocolate guitar chips today. Because like after I eat anything, it's like I, I chase it with chocolate chips. They're so good. It's like I love a nice that. palate cleanser. They are. Of course you're using dark, dark chocolate chips too. <laughs> Yep. And you know what I just ate? I had a little piece of a middle of an Oreo on my counter next to a little piece of cookie dough. Yeah. I ate them together. It was like the most delicious bite. I think I'm going to, the cookies are so hot and they've been out of the oven for like five minutes. And this is when I realized like, do I want to burn my mouth? And then I just realized I left them sitting on the hot pan and I didn't like transfer them to ah. a cooling rack, which probably would have helped me a little bit, but that's okay. It's good to let them cool for a few minutes on your um, pan, though, just because if you try to move them too quickly, they can lose their shape or just get kind of messed up. So you do want to do that for a little bit, but if you're trying uh -oh. to eat your cookies right away, I think it helps to do it sooner rather than later. I have no patience. Oh, my gosh. I totally forgot the smell of, like, baked sprinkles and cookies. That smells really good. I need a glass of milk. Hold, hold on. Hold on. I have this silly cup that has cats on it, so I'm going to drink out of that. Not bad. I just need a sip. I don't need a lot, just a sip. You know, I think I have a little strategy for how I'm going to decorate my cookies. So I think it makes the most sense. I know. Who, like, cares as much? Like, I know. Whatever. First, no, I love it. Top this them is literally with Oreo. Like and then you top them with the chocolate chips. You like kind of like fill in the holes of the, with the chocolate chips. And then after you do all of that, then you dunk it in the sprinkles. So the sprinkles kind of only stick to the parts. That that's smart. Cool showing. Well, that's so smart because when I tried to dunk in my non perils I think this will still turn out cool, but my cookie is like covered in sprinkles on the top. So and then look, there's no room for anything else. No, it'll look like one of those cookies that is sprinkle dunked, which is totally fine and is a great cookie in its own right. But if that's not what you're going for and you want to add some other stuff, it definitely makes life a little bit harder. You know, I consider myself like a ratio specialist. I like that. That is like a lot of what baking is, it's all about ratios. Okay, I'm going to do a close up of my cookie, guys. I'm going to swing around. I wish you could smell this. Hopefully, if you guys are baking with us, at let's home, compare cookies. Good. Cheers. We should cheers. Che or yeah, like, yeah. or I'd go down. You go up. Yeah. Cheers. <laughs> okay. Mm. Oh no. So my bottom is just like lightly golden brown. Same. Okay, the non frills are actually really good. They're crunchy. Oh my goodness, that's good. Whoa. Make these cookies. And you know what? What? I almost, I don't even know if I used cream of tartar. I don't know what that white powdery substance was that I put in these, but. <laughs> Melissa, things that sound questionable. <laughs> I don't know what the white powder thing. Well, <laughs> I mean, it was either cream of tartar. It definitely wasn't salt. Maybe baking soda or baking powder, but I bet it was cream of tartar. But my, what I was going to say is that if you watch this and you don't have every single ingredient, like I was thinking if I couldn't find cream of tartar, I actually asked my husband to bring it home from the bakery for me because he was at Bake by Melissa today, but he didn't get my text until, hmm. but I found it, but I wasn't going to use it. I was just going to ask you. <laughs> I no, was like, maybe out. I'll like add extra baking powder. I didn't know. I think it still would have turned out fine. It just like ensures that your cookies, it gives you more kind of like leeway if you over bake them a little bit. Like, you know, they'll still be chewy. That's really what it is. Um, uh, you know what's really silly? I forgot how good cookies are fresh out of the oven because 
So never often, forget. Never I'm forget. making a recipe and then I'm photographing it and then I'm staging it and then I'm packaging it up to you with my friends because I've already eaten that. Like, I never eat a cookie right out of the oven when it's still warm. And this is like the biggest treat I've given myself in a long time. It is really so much better <laughs> warm. What's your favorite cake that you ever made? And I feel like you need to live your life a little bit more. You should I've eat been, those hot cookies. That's I have like the best part of your job. Always like make an extra one that you could enjoy before you photograph it. That's the problem is I'm always worried I'm going to eat. And I mean, I eat everything I make. I just usually eat it after the fact. So I'm not like thinking about like staging them anymore. But I'm always worried I'm going to eat that one cookie. And then I'm making a cookie stack for like a shoot. And I'm going <laughs> to need one more cookie. No, I hear you. I get it. But it is true. It's so good. And it's like worth treating yourself. Um, my favorite cake I've ever made is, is really our wedding cake. I, think. I saw that it was so beautiful and you looked so beautiful in your wedding dress I don't know that I saw your wedding pictures ever before until you just and wait a second your anniversary is the 23rd yep is yours the 24th ah well happy no wait today's the 25th right happy yeah, belated anniversary yesterday. um that's so nice it's a good good time of year to get married Not totally lie. wait so that was one year or two years just one Happy How anniversary. Old? You said you guys have been married for like eight years? Eight years. Man. I'm, like, I'm old. We were looking at our wedding pictures, or I was looking at our wedding pictures <laughs> the night before. And like, we, I thought I was a grown up, but like, I looked like a baby. So I don't know. I still think I'm, I think I'm a grown up now, but I'm sure when I look at myself eight years from now, I'm going to be like, oh my God, I was <laughs> such a baby. <laughs> But I'm a baby with babies, so I don't know. Like, weird, man. I'm flies. Man. Yeah, I could just, like, sit here and eat cookies all day now. I'm, so, I'm actually in the middle of making a pride cake. Oh, also, Melissa, we should talk about, speaking of which, we should talk about the Bake My Melissa um, pride cupcake packs that you guys are doing, which is so cool. Yeah, we have pride cupcakes. The portion of proceeds go to the center. They're rainbow. Mm -hmm. um, we've been working with the center for a couple of years. They're amazing. We love supporting them. Um, we launched a new website yesterday, bakedbymelissa.com. And I must say, like, the mobile, ex you know, the mobile, the desktop experience, the experience on our new website is incredible. It gave me the chills. I'm so proud. Our team is amazing. They work their butts off for, like, so long. You have no idea. Um, we have a loyalty program now. Ooh. That's yeah. So, so you um, could buy cupcakes and get points so you could get more cupcakes or prizes and presents and oh my god we're gonna have so much fun with that loyalty program. One thing I really love about everything you guys sell is that it ships so well which like isn't as big of a deal for me here because like you're obviously located in New York but I send some to my sister and it's just like you can send them literally anywhere in the my sister lives in Seattle sorry. So you can literally ship them anywhere in the country and they still turn out just as great. Like the packaging is so fantastic and cute. And like, it's so hard to find things that ship that well. And that sounds silly, but like sending someone something special like that, that you know is going to be amazing when it arrives. is so nice. So. Oh, you're the best. Well, thank you. And also I agree. Because, we have the best product and it arrives perfectly fresh and safe everywhere you ship it to. We've actually found, um, you know, I guess what I should say, it's like, it's very nice to be a little silver lining um, during this challenging time. Like, Ugh. obviously, like, I feel incredibly privileged to be able to do this with you and like have my health and a roof over my head. But, you know, there, we all have our own challenges and some people are going through even bigger ones. And I think like, it's so nice to be able to like deliver something to people who like it just makes them happy and then it they does. enjoy it yeah and especially the pride cupcakes they're literally like rainbow they're so pretty and so cute and um but also all the other flavors you guys always like rotate around uh, yeah the that's what flavors I mean. so of the month. we have we have a mini of the month every month but we have a seasonal assortment so because summer just started we just launched our summer assortment and I always like it. I am obsessed with dessert. Obviously, that's why we're here. And um, our three summer collection flavors are strawberry shortcake, chocolate eggclair, based on the good humor bars that we grew up eating in the summer, Ooh. like with that like crumble and yeah. chip witch. 
And they're oh. so good. Um, oh my gosh. Highly recommend. And they Those come in the greatest assortment. So you go I to love that you guys, I love that you guys do the seasonal flavors because it kind of is like every time you order a new package, it's like something new or a new flavor, and it just keeps things so exciting. Thank and they're you. always so good. Like, I feel like you guys somehow really nail the flavors every time. And I'm sure it's like, obviously through lots of recipe testing and like hard work, but man, it's, it is worth it. You want to know my secret? Yes. <laughs> my husband and I are the, are the product development team and we're, and we're very competitive in the kitchen. So a lot of the time I'll say like, okay, like, here's what I want to do. Like, let's do chocolate egg, here's strawberry shortcake and chip witch for the summer assortment. And I'll like lay out all the details and I'll send them over to him and he'll look at it and he'll be like, fine, I will make what you ask, but then I'm going to make another version that I think is going to be better. Ooh. Like, I'm like, okay. And I like that though. I feel like happens. you have to really care about what you're doing. I think you, you can tell when something is really good that somebody really cared about making it and like coming up with a recipe. I think it just shows in the end result, you know? Kind of like these delicious cookies. <laughs> I like, I really am kind of, this was a big eye opener that I think I have not been like enjoying myself recently enough. Like that, that warm chocolate chip cookie or that warm funfetti Oreo cookie shouldn't have been like so exciting to me, but it was. <laughs> That's so funny. I've been enjoying myself a little too much. I need to stop eating all of my baked goods um, for the sake of everyone. Because, like, I'll be so good and healthy all day, and then I'll bake a cake and, like, eat all of the scraps or, like, make my own mini one with the, with the extra batter. That's the hard thing is, like, I really believe in, like, whenever you eat something, especially dessert, it should be worth it. So, like, when you make something that's really tasty and you know it's worth it, it's, like, well, I, you know, you, you can't like pass up that opportunity. And also just like when you are recipe testing, you got to eat a lot of different batches of things. That's true. You know, and you, especially when you're trying to get something just right, you really have to, you have to take a bunch of bites to, you know, think about how you could improve it or something you want to change with it. And that's where. We had a tasting yesterday at yeah. 10 a.m. for like seven different flavors. And I like asked for it to be earlier and I'm like sitting at my computer with my cupcakes, like, which is just funny that that's like what a tasting is these days, but whatever. <laughs> but then once you take a bite, it doesn't matter. It's so good. You like get lost in the experience of it all. Exactly. And that's like half the fun of dessert is just like getting to treat yourself and really have a, a wonderful moment in your day, you know? I agree. This, this has been the most wonderful moment of my entire day. And even though I'm supposed to be in a meeting in five minutes. I was going to say, I think you have to go to a meeting, so I probably should. Like, I can't walk away. Like, I'm going to need to finish these, and then I'll put them in the fridge. And this is going to be dessert for my entire family tonight. And, you know, I let my kids, like, my kids can eat whatever they want. For, as long as they eat dinner, dessert is, like, because they also, like, don't eat enough dessert. Like, my four-year-old, she'll be like, I'll give her, like, a huge piece of cake, and she'll take two bites, and then be like, I'm full. I'm like, what? <laughs> and, then, and then I eat it. But anyway, we're all going to have a great dessert, thanks to you. Thank uh, you. I like that it's, like, a problem that your daughter doesn't eat enough dessert. That's so cute. <laughs> I think it's, like, a good learning, you know? Like, let them be free. Yes. No, I – if and when uh, my husband and I have kids, that's definitely going to be the approach that I want to take. <laughs> Well, yeah, because you're also a dessert queen, you know? And there's just, like, always sweets around the house. It's true, you know? And that's okay. That's good. I like it that way. <laughs> yeah, and also when you know you can have it and, you know, like, I think. It, it makes it less it, of, like, a taboo thing. Yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like I'm not going to eat ten cookies. Maybe I'll only eat seven because I know I can make them again. Or it's, like, you eat, you eat until you feel happy, and then you're, like, I'm going to go for a walk because I need to just, like, get a little bit of balance in my life. And I need okay. to get away from the is. Yeah. That happens to me often. Yeah. No, same. But it's okay. We're living our lives, and I think that's okay. I, I agree. I'm, like, these are so good. Uh, thank you so much. This yeah, is no, so I mean, fun. I can't yeah, believe see it's a global <laughs> pandemic for us to bake together. I know. It's funny, though, because, like, I feel like the pandemic is bringing people together in different ways like this, and in some ways, it's really nice, so. I mean, I agree, and I think that's what gets everybody through. You got to focus on the silver linings and the opportunities you wouldn't have had otherwise. 
Like exactly. I've never spent more time with my child, my children, and my husband and my wife. <laughs> and it's so nice. I, I love know. it. I totally agree. And so, Melissa, thank you so much for you to baking with me today. And thanks to everybody else who joined. This was a lot of fun. Um, we should do it again sometime. We should definitely do it again. And you know what? I'm not going to eat any until I take the perfect picture. <laughs> you know, I'm you're, you. you're pulling a me. Don't. don't. It's no way to live life. I'm kidding. I could never do that. I don't have that type of self-control. But I'm going to try. Oh, man. Well, I hope everybody else's cookies turned out as yummy as ours did today. Um, and I don't even know. Okay. Hopefully, we'll do another one soon. Yeah. Thank right, you, well, Happy. You yeah, are thank you. the best. I had the best time with you. I had the best time with you. I, I hope I'll see you again soon. I don't want to join, too. It took me actually a minute to find your request, so that wasn't actually on you. That was my. Well, I messaged her. I was like, "How do I join?" LOL. No, we figured it out. We're all good. Um, okay. okay, I don't. Now I don't know how to end this. <laughs> oh, God. The X. The X at the top. Right. Oh, I think it's like my. It's because no. I have it in a little. See, this is when you think you know technology, and then you're like, "Well, actually, also it looks so shiny in these lights." Okay. Um. Bye, you guys. Thanks for joining. Bye, and guys. And thanks again. See you later.